Hello, my name is Ash and I am the CAD CAM specialist at the Articate Centre in the UK. Today I'd like to talk to you about minimising chair time and the benefits of guided surgery and a digital workflow for both the clinician and the technician. I'd like to first start by comparing freehand surgery with guided surgery. These images are of a delayed placement case where the dentist has removed the natural tooth placed some bovine derived substitute and a barrier membrane uh, in order to provide a sound healed ridge in preparation for an implant. The dentist waited 16 weeks to allow for healing prior to drilling the osteotomy in preparation for the implant. This is now the patient's second visit. Here we see a clip of the dentist performing surgery. And this is where we will start to see the first differences between freehand surgery and guided surgery. Drills typically have at least two cutting edges, meaning that the apex of the drill has a dead spot built into the design of the drill where there is no cutting action taking place. This dead spot can actually cause the drill to drift on the surface of the bone until the bone has been punctured. This means that there is a chance for the site of the osteotomy to have drifted from the actual intended site. This drifting motion also could cause damage to the soft tissue in the area. Another thing to consider is that there is a natural arc to a person's wrist movement, meaning that there is a chance for angular deviation, which means that the osteotomy underneath the surface of the bone could have an irregular shape. One common practice that we find when drilling is to actually increase the drilling speed, which increases the stability of the drill itself. Although this practice is successful, it does actually increase the chance of causing a mist, which in the current climate is something that we are trying to avoid. I have slowed down the video in order to better see this drifting action taking place. And I also took some screenshots at different stages in the video in order to demonstrate the potential for angular deviation with the natural arc of a person's wrist movement. One final thing that we see from the periapical x-ray that was provided was that the implant has not been placed subcrestally. This is something that guided surgery can also help with. From start to finish, the approximate time taken for this, uh, to perform surgery on this patient was approximately 20 weeks, and this involved four patient visits. Now that I have briefly spoken about freehand surgery, I would like to take a minute to quickly talk about the principles of guided surgery and what it can provide us with. Guided surgery should be faster than freehand surgery. This is especially true for more complex cases or cases where we have a narrow ridge. Guided surgery should also be easier than freehand surgery for both the patient and the dentist. An experienced dentist may say that they could perform surgery faster than uh, guided surgery, but guided surgery does provide us with the comfort of giving us accurate and consistent results in a wide range of different kinds of cases. Guided surgery should also provide more extensive analysis of cases. A CBCT is digital information, and because of the fact that it is digital information, it can be modified to better suit our needs. One of the ways in which it can be modified is to actually calibrate the Hounsford units to match that of the patient's uh, actual bone quality. This means that we can judge the patient's bone quality and then be more prepared for the time of surgery. Um, guided surgery should also make it easier to achieve better or more consistent aesthetic results. One of the key features or one of the key principles of guided surgery is that we can reverse engineer or backwards engineer the uh, implant site <clears throat> based on the required um, aesthetics that we are trying to achieve. This means that we are looking at the entire process on a whole and trying to give better results across the board. Guided surgery should also enable better or more reliable communication between the clinic and the laboratory. Because the information that we are collecting is digital information, this means that it is much easier for us to um, store and to send this information between the clinic and the laboratory and the quality of the information that we are now able to send is also increasing. Guided surgery should also enable laboratories to provide high aesthetic results 
again this is due to the fact that the information that we are collecting is digital information and we are able to reverse engineer the perfect implant position based on the required aesthetic results that we are trying to achieve. The first stage of any guided surgery case is to acquire the digital information needed to proceed. To the two pieces of information that we need to acquire is the intraoral scan or an impression which will then be cast into a stone model and we also need the CBCT information. Once we have the intraoral scan or the stone model, we can then begin to process this information so that we can extract teeth if needed and modify the STL to suit our needs. Another thing that we need to do is to design a wax up to match the aesthetics of what we are trying to achieve. Now that we have modified the digital model, we can then move on to calibrating the Helmsford units within the CBCT. This is the CBCT before calibration, and this is the CBCT after calibration. You can see that I have also merged the digital model and the wax up to the um, CBCT in the software. The next step is to decide on an implant site. This is the stage where we assess the quality of the bone and we have a look at the space that we have to work with. We could decide on the implant dimensions that we would like to use and the exact angle and position of this implant within the jaw. Once confirmation has been given by the dentist, we can then move on to the production stage. In this stage, we extract two pieces of information from the software in order to aid us with the production of the stent and also the screw retained temporary crown. One final thing to do is to create a drilling protocol and incorporate all of the information into one easy to read file for the dentist. This drilling protocol will give the dentist the information about the dimensions of the implant and the implant site as well as the general area of the intended position for the implant and together with this information the dentist will then be recommended a drilling sequence based on the bone density and the dimensions of the implant. Up to this stage, the patient has only made one visit to the dentist and all of the operations performed have been carried out away from the surgery. This means that the dentist has been able to perform their daily routine without any interruption. So far, the operations performed are that we have decided on an implant position, we have looked at the bone density and we have decided on a drilling sequence uh, to, to best suit the bone density and the implant dimensions that we have chosen and we have also created a immediate screw retained temporary crown and potentially a rochette bridge if the immediate screw retained temporary crown is not viable for use. Now comes the time for surgery. Here are some pre-op images of what greeted the dentist on the day of surgery. We can see here that the post has sheared and that the buckle plate does not look very thick meaning that in all likelihood, the buckle plate will be removed along with the root. Here we can see some images of the natural root and tooth having been removed. The dentist then proceeded to place the stent and begin drilling the osteotomy. As this was a post extraction site, he decided that there was no need to start at the beginning of the drilling sequence and instead chose to start with some wider drills after which he then placed the implant. Here we can see the implant in position and as we predicted the buckle plate has been removed at the time of extraction. The dentist placed the cover screw and performed some light GBR in this area. After removing the cover screw and checking the ISQ values the dentist decided to place the screw retained temporary crown that was provided by the R2 center. In total, we were looking at a surgery time of 15 minutes. These images were taken four weeks after surgery and we can see that the gum looks healthy and the dentist was happy to proceed to the next stage. He placed a scan body into the implant and intraorally scanned the case in preparation for the definitive crown. Here are the final results of the definitive crown in place, which was delivered two weeks after the scanning of the scan flag. 
the patient was extremely happy with the aesthetics. In total, we had a surgery time of 15 minutes, a healing time of 4 weeks and a start to finish time of approximately 6 weeks with 3 patient visits. This in comparison to the 20 weeks it would have taken for the freehand case as well as 4 patient visits means that this is still the more desirable uh, protocol. Everything that we've been talking about so far has been from a clinical point of view and a planning point of view, but how does this actually impact your lab? One of the ways in which the lab can actually benefit from a digital workflow is articulation and the use of articulators. Um, articulation in a lab is not something that is always as accurate as we would like it to be. And this can be from a number of things. It could be from the uh, accuracy of the bite not being quite right, or it could be that the impressions were a bit distorted. And another thing that we can have to consider is that when articulating, although we're using a special plaster that actually has a lower expansion rate than the normal diastone plaster, there is still an amount of expansion there that takes place, which means that it's very time consuming to actually try and alleviate all of these variables within this process. And a really amazing thing that we have that we are starting to do now within the digital workflow is that we are using the CBCT to actually identify the patient's condyle, which means that we have a much more accurate identification of that hinge. And we can then use that information to then 3D print mounts for a model rather than having to rely on plaster or rely on face bows or rely on uh, bite registrations. When we talk about aesthetics for a case, we should also talk about the relationship between the aesthetics and how the function can also be affected by the aesthetics. In this particular situation, you can see here that the implant uh, angle is not ideal for a very wide contact point. So in this situation, we'd end up with what we call a point contact, which actually increases the food trap underneath the point contact, directly affecting the function of the crown in the first place. Guided surgery can actually avoid this process as well as a digital workflow while being able to analyze the situation. Um, another thing to consider here is that when we think about consultations with the patient, it's normally the clinic that is giving the consultation. And um, one thing that I have noticed is that it might be interesting if we actually start incorporating laboratories into this conversation, because there are also limitations on the, on the manufacturing side of things that should be considered when it comes to planning of a case. It's not just to do with the implant position, it's also to do with the limitations of the manufacturing processes, such as the uh, materials themselves, the aesthetic values of the materials themselves, as well as the structural integrity of the materials themselves and um, the limitations of the machinery that you have at use. If your laboratory doesn't have access to certain kinds of machinery, that will also limit what they are able to achieve. And in order to get the best aesthetic value from your relationship with your lab, the best thing to do would be to consult them on these kind of problems. Another thing that I have noticed has been gaining more popularity re in the recent years is actually a model free workflow. So now that we have a digital workflow, we also have a model free workflow where you can take an intraoral scan, send it to a laboratory, and there is no need to waste time making models, especially if it's a single unit case. You could take something like a, a full contour monolithic zirconia, bond that to a titanium base, and you actually have no need to even use a um, model to determine the contact points because the intraoral scan is more than accurate enough for a single unit to, to, to get those results. When I was working in a laboratory, I, I have done this myself on some previous cases and the results have been quite surprising. So what does this mean for your patient? We've been talking a lot about the aesthetic value and the accuracy and the function of, uh, of guided surgery and a digital workflow. Um, but the patient may not necessarily be looking at these things. I would, I would argue that the patient is going to be looking at their quality of care. And it's not only about the quality of care, it's also about how they perceive their quality of care. And this is where I think that guided surgery has a major benefit over freehand surgery because the level of um, technological, technologically advanced um, techniques that we're using within this 
process means that the patient is going to have a much better perception of how they've been cared for throughout this process and they may be more likely to recommend you to a friend or a family member. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you found it interesting. And if you would ever like to contact me, my email address is at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.